How are we doing? My name is Glenn. I'm with V Power Equipment and today we are going to show the installation of our electric stack kit for the Predator 212 engine. First we'll show you what comes with the kit. Basically it comes with the uh, flywheel housing, comes with the key box, the flywheel itself, the starter, a charging coil, and some miscellaneous hardware that's needed to install it. We offer two kits. We have one for the 69730 and then one for the Hemi engine 60363. The flywheels are different on these kits and they are not interchangeable. If you're ordering an engine and want to install one of these on it, please wait till you get the engine in because sometimes they will ship you, you'll order a 69730 and they'll send a 69730 and they'll send you a 60363 and then the kit you'll have won't be compatible. Um, so it's best just to wait until you get the engine um, in and then order the kit that you know will be compatible. Okay, so let me get my camera set up here. Give me a minute, let's I'll wobble a bit, get it set up. And I think that's a pretty good angle right there. We're up there. All right, and now we're gonna go ahead and begin our install. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to remove the air box. We're gonna need to remove the air box and this front shroud. Um, and we're going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to take out the two bolts. And we're going to turn this around. There's a hose over here that goes into the valve cover. We're going to want to pop that out. There's a little thing up here that holds the hose. It's like a little a little wrap around wire thing. Wrap that, unwrap that from the hose. Turn the engine back around. Undo your air box. Do the holes and you can just set that right up over the back of the engine all right next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the recoil starter we are going to reuse that recoil starter so we're going to pull that off and we're going to pull that off and then we're going to, pull that off. And we're going to set that aside now the wiring of this engine we've already disconnected it but just so you know Basically, we're not going to use this switch any longer. However, it is connected in, these wire connectors are connected in like this. And what we want to do is we don't want to uh, pull them. We don't want to grab the wires and pull on them because sometimes the connectors won't come apart and then you'll pull the wires out. So you just want to kind of grab the two ends and kind of twist it a little bit. Do the same thing on all of them and get them off and try to keep the ends on tack on the engine because we are going to use those wire ends. All right, so now we're going to turn the engine back around. And I'm going to put that gasket back up there because it needs to stay right where it was. There we go. So now we're going to remove the shroud. There's a bolt up top. There is a bolt on the other top. And there's two on the bottom. Here on the bottom, and then we're just going to take that shroud off, and we're going to set it back. Okay. Then the next thing we're going to want to do is we want to unbolt the coil and just push it to the side. We don't need to actually remove it from the engine. We just need to move it away from the flywheel so that it doesn't get damaged when we pull the flywheel off the engine. There we go. Take that off. Try to get the magnet away from it so we're going to try to pull it in. And now we've got that off. Okay, now we need to take the flywheel off. So an impact hit gun is the best way to go if you have one. If you don't, you can do it without it. It just makes it a little hotter. And we're just going to take that off, that off, and that off. Okay, so now you've got the bolt off, but the flywheel is still stuck on because it's on a taper. And so it is stuck on that taper. So I find the easiest way to get the flywheels to break free from the taper is you want to hit them. It sends a shock wave through the flywheel and it will break the taper. You're not trying to hit it to bang it out. You're just trying to hit it to send the shock wave through it. And that one didn't work. And there we go. So that breaks it free. And now we can take that flywheel off, set it aside. Okay. Now we need to remove this shroud. And we need to put the 8 millimeter wrench on there. And we're going to 
going to take that off. And we're going to set that aside. Okay, so now we are going to install, we're going to start reinstalling the charging, uh, the starting kit parts. And we're going to start with the charging coil. So I'm going to find the two right bolts here for the charging coil. Charging coil has two little nipples there that lock into these little towers that it bolts onto. We're gonna put that there. And we're gonna put that there. And we're gonna go ahead and put that there. Alright. So now we're going to install the starter. Now the starter has a long bolt on the top, and you use a shorter bolt on the bottom. I'm going to try to make sure these wires stay pushed back. And we don't want to quite tighten it yet because we still got to put the bottom one in. And when we put the bottom one in, we need to put the shroud in there with it. So then we're going to put that in. Get this thing started. This wire here, we're going to feed through the, the space in between the engine and the starter. We're going to feed it back, and then we're going to kind of tuck it in. It kind of tucks right in underneath there, just like that. Hopefully you can see that. It just kind of tucks right in there. And that will be good. There's plenty of space between it and the flywheel, so it should be fine. We just want to keep it away from the flywheel. All right. We're going to retighten this top one because I didn't tighten that one all the way. Okay, so now we get that in there. So we've got our starter in, our wires pushed back, and that's all good. Now we need to install the new flywheel. So we're going to take it, line the keyway up. And get it popped in. We're going to take this and line it up now you're going to notice on some of these some of these flywheels have three holes some of them have four holes this particular one has four holes and your fan blade has three so basically what you want to do is you're going to want to shave one of them off the other two will lock in and this one back here you're going to shave it off it can't go anywhere because we're going to have this piece over it bolted in so it will be fine. And we're just gonna get that there. Put that back on. And tighten that bolt up. There we go. And now we're gonna to have to put the coil back on. Okay. So to put the coil on, we basically, we don't want the magnet facing it, we want the magnet not facing it. And then we want to put, I use a business card in there, and then we're going to want to put the two bolts. In there. And then we're going to want to tighten the bolts. Tighten the bottom one first, because if you tighten the top one first, it tends to want to pull the bottom away from the flywheel. And you want to be up against that business card. You don't want to be so tight you can't remove the card, but you do want to be fairly tight. 
So find it's best to do the bottom one first, pull the cot out, rotate your flywheel, make sure there's no obstruction, especially around the magnet. This is all good, so we're good to go here. All right, so now we are going to reinstall the new cover now. It's going to go right here. careful when you do this you are going to reuse the bolts and you want to make sure that you use the shortest bolts for the uh, the start of recoil it needs to have the very short bolts like that because otherwise they'd be too long and they can hit the plastic uh, flame I don't bother, I don't tighten them all until I have them all in, um, simply because it's easier. And I actually think we're gonna have to take that top one off again anyways to light up the key box. I believe that's how it lines up for my right. Yeah. So we're gonna take that top bolt, put it through the key box, Now the bottom of the key box gets put in with a nut and bolt. So we're gonna put the nut from behind. Probably have to tilt this so you really can't see it, but there's a nut and bolt in here. And we're going to attempt to put them together. So get that in there. And we can just reach behind with the nut. Okay, now our key box is locked in place. Now we are going to reinstall our recoil. Once again, using the shot bolts. And we're going to pull our air box back over. We are going to let me try to turn this light back on. There we go. We are going to get it part way on. And then we're going to slip that hose over the top of the spark plug wire back into the air filter housing. Kind of squeeze it to push it in there. But to get it in there, there we go. Now we just need to put the bolts back on the carburetor. Okay. Okay, so now we're gonna do the wiring on this kit. This is probably where I get the most questions asked about the wiring on the kit. Now, while most of the colors of the wires do stay the same, they, I got to admit they don't always stay the same. Especially the charging coil wire, for some reason it seems to vary. But even, even though the colors may, be, may vary a bit, it's still not very difficult. Let's basically start off with this. We have, coming off the engine, we have a black wire that comes from under the tank that goes to the coil. We have a black wire that goes to this little oil alert box. We now have a wire that comes off the charging coil that we installed. And we have this wire, this, is, this one's black and white off the starter relay. I, I know for a fact that sometimes this wire is red. So let's start with the black wire with the two ends. It's got two ends on it, as you can see. And basically, they go to the coil in the oil alert box. Now, they're, you, they can't, you can't mix them up because one is male and one is female. So the male one goes into the coil wire, and you push the boot back over it. 
and then the female one goes into the oil alert box and you push that boot back up over that. Then the next one we'll go to is going to be, well, see, so we've got basically, we've got three wires left coming off the key box. Well, you, you really can't mess them up because they're all different ends. So you're basically, you're gonna take this one here with the male end and it is going to go to your charging coil wire and they're gonna connect them together and you're gonna slide the boot over it. And then you're gonna take the other one with the uh, female end on it and it's gonna to go to the relay. You're gonna connect them together and put the boot over it. Okay, that leads us to this one with the ring terminal. So this one with the ring terminal goes to this lug on the starter relay. Now, this is also where the positive battery cable goes. We're not, we're not actually installing this engine, so we don't have a positive battery cable or a negative battery cable, but your positive battery cable is gonna to go to this lug. It is very important that that is the positive battery cable, and your negative cable will go somewhere else on the engine. If you mistakenly hook your negative cable to here and your positive cable to here, you will instantly burn out the ignition coil. So we're gonna put your positive cable there. You're gonna put this on there. You're gonna put that together. Get our trusty tool here, tighten it up, and there we go. Now it comes with a wire tie. Um, some people use that wire tie to hold this wire against the starter behind the flywheel. Um, I don't find that necessary. I actually use the wire tie just to kind of bundle my wires up, make it a little bit neater, something on that idea, and then just wrap the wire tie around it just to make it look better. And we can actually do it with the wire tie right here. So this may not be the neatest job, but it gives you the idea. So we're basically just going to do something like that. So now it's all knocked up nice and neat. And there is our finished product. It is a Predator 212 with an electric stock kit all installed and ready to go. We thank you for watching. If you'd like to purchase one of these or see more information, you can go to vpowerequipment.com and we have them available, as I said, for both the 69730 and the 60363 engine. And we thank you for watching and have a good day.